Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Working Musicians Podcast, the original Working Musicians Podcast. And today, I have yet another show for you. <laughs> Imagine that. Huh. Looks like my, uh, the squiggly line on my... Oh, that's better. Okay. So, you know, if, if you've ever seen a digital audio workstation, I call them DAWs because I hate it when people call them DAWs. It's a DAW. Just call it a DAW. Right? Uh, that's why it's called DAW Wars, not DAW Wars. Come on. DAW. Oh, hear that? Uh, just had a little DAW Wars right there. But they all have basically worked the same to an extent. And uh, the way it's got this, like, bar, and then you can see the wave signals and they look like squiggly sausagey line thingies like squiggles and uh i, I realized i didn't have my my screen scrolled all the way to the top and i'm like what the heck this thing's why is it so off-centered you know it looks weird and i scrolled up I'm like oh okay i see what's going on ah yes yes so i just got done recording another podcast i think episode 27 now i'm going on to episode 28 and i'm just real motivated to hit 30 episodes. I mean, that just seems like, wow, it's a milestone. I mean, 40 will be cool, but 50 will really be awesome. And then after that, it's like, hey, 100, you know? <clears throat> I feel like if I were to do 100 podcasts, I, I feel like I could stop and feel like, you know, hey, I've, I had a good go at it. And if you have like 100 of something, it's enough to where even after the fact, which most people will probably discover this after the fact, that's kind of how I in, anticipate it working. You know, people will discover it after the fact, but it'll still be relevant enough, everything I talk about for the most part, to where they can appreciate it, you know, five years, ten years later. It still doesn't really change. Um, but I feel like, you know, if I could get it to a hundred episodes, like, wow, you know, that I've really got something, you know? That's pretty cool. You know, I think that it'll be something that, you know, people have heard of, potentially, if they enjoy it, you know? To the point where, like, if I when I do come out with another episode, you know, I, I, I just think that if I after taking a hundred episodes, I can take a little time off from doing this, and I'd feel pretty good about it. And I think uh, after a hundred episodes, at the rate I'm going, you know, oh, I could probably, um, I'll probably have time to really getting back to music again. So I think that's a good thing. I, I needed something to keep myself occupied that's kind of musicish related until I really get some more free time to do music and. With two young kids and working like I do, it's just not practical. But I can find time to do this. And the other thing is just because you have time doesn't mean you have the energy. And right now, it's about it's it's hard to find time. I get time, but it's not like consistent. And when I do, it's kind of like, well, you know, I wasn't anticipating waking up stupid early this morning, but that's what happens. So I've got enough time to actually make two of these. But I don't want to wake up people, you know. So I can't go and bang it out on the guitar right now. To be perfectly honest, it's like, do you really feel like banging it out on the guitar at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning? Because that's basically what I'm at. I'm, at, I'm like, been up for like two hours. and like, eh, it doesn't really, like, why? Huh? Like, I can barely move, you know? So I think that 100 episodes, that's, that's a good goal to get to. For all I know, I'll get to 50 and be like, okay, screw this, I'm done. I can't even think of ideas, but it, it just doesn't seem that hard to think of ideas, you know? Think about something and do it. Because reality, half the episode, I'm just talking about stupid crap anyway, so it has nothing to do with anything, like I'm doing right now. I'm rambling. But that's kind of the point of the show. It's, it's, it's largely entertainment. That's what it is. It's me speaking higher in pitch and then going back lower again and then delivering a point deliberately. That is... It's called entertainment. <laughs> yeah, let me have some more tea. This time, uh, this, this episode is brought to you by, well, it's going to be brought to you by two things. One of which hmm, is some oolong tea, because that's what I found in my pantry. And then after I run out of oolong tea, I'm going to probably uh, salute to Miller High Life again. I did a little tea then beer combo in my last episode. Uh, so I figured, hey, that seemed to be a pretty good one. Um, you know, 
Why not? It, it, it seems like a good combo. I, I, I tend to like it. That might be how I roll. Get a little bit of caffeine with the tea and then a little bit of alcohol with the beer. You know? Although this would be, I'd be working on my second tall boy. So, you know, I haven't eaten this morning. I just woke up like two hours ago. So three hours, you know, but it, it seems like my episodes are an hour long now. Like how the hell did that happen? You know, it's, it's funny when you first start, someone's like, geez, if I can just make them 30 minutes long, you know, well, hell, they end up being like an hour, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just seems to be how it goes. It, you know, it used to be like, though, they'd be about 45. Then it was like, let me try to keep them between 45, 50 minutes. That seems like a good amount of time. But now it seems like an hour is starting to become the norm. And I don't really know what the norm is going to be. I might decide to shorten it up. It just depends because I think that there are some topics that, mm, Sure, I could drag them out for the course of an hour, but it may not be necessary. But if I were to just go with the the, the formula of, hey, I'm going to try to make these an hour. So if you know, just as a podcaster, I real in a, you know, I got to realize, hey, I've got to put a little bit more time into this. Uh, is you know, into going into the topic, you know, I kind of know. But what I've kind of found out is, I can kind of tell in advance how much time, you know, roughly. Hey, if, if I can't think of a whole lot of different points to talk to in two minutes before I start my podcast, there's a good chance I might need to add a little bit more fluff to the beginning to make it longer. And that's probably what I'll have to do. And it'll probably get to the point where, you know, I'll, a lot of it will just be more <laughs> entertainment towards the beginning. And then towards the end, you get a, a side of information, right? And not that what I'm telling you is information. I mean, it's kind of a, it's just my opinion on things, you know? I'm informing you of my opinion which may be correct, it may not be. And I think that'll be especially a, a good point to make mention of, is, and I get into the, the, the show title of this, this episode later on, but I don't want to say it now and then have you think about that and then come back to it and then tickle your pickle and uh, leave you hanging. So, but at the same time, maybe I should. I don't know. But I've, I've got, I just keep coming up with ideas for things to do. And I'm just like, well, let me just pick one and go with it, you know. But uh, it, it's just, it's just, wow, well, you know, I just realized I'm approaching 30 episodes. And it's like, wow, I can't believe this is going like this. And, you know, I, hell, it just, geez, this is episode, I think, 27 or 28. Hold on, let me look this up. It is number, this is currently episode 28. And I'm sure if I, poked around i'd find at least a couple more that i could just put out there if i want to say i had 30 but eh, i'm not just going to throw stuff up there that i think sucks you know like the early episodes man were those things dreadful uh but you know i feel pretty good about this show and, and how everything's going but there, there's one thing uh, uh just kind of a, a a public service announcement i think needs to be made you know maybe i'm not the best person to say it but i, th I think it needs to be made and that is Yoga pants are not for everyone, and if you do not as appear as if you've ever gone to a yoga class, you probably shouldn't wear the yoga pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, ho, oh, holy cow, and there they go. Those are yoga pants. Hmm. So, I guess that kind of ties into the, the episode I'm going to be talking about, which I, I might go in and out of this. I feel like I'm kind of in a mood where I'll kind of weave a little bit. I'm thinking I'll probably weave in and out of this bad boy a little bit. But this episode is titled Looking the Part, right? Isn't that the part? <laughs> well, that's kind of strange and dryce. I mean, you hear uh, nobody really sees you. I don't have any real imagery of me. And although, in all fairness, if you look up there, I do have a picture of myself, my face. I'm wearing sunglasses, but it, you really can't tell what I look like. And hell, now I look different than that, I'm sure. I can't even remember. It's kind of cool. It's like a photo of somebody taking a picture of me. And you can kind of see them through my sunglasses because it's so close. It's kind of, a, it's neat. It was a real cool photo that came out. You know, sometimes that's just how they come out. It's like, whoa, this one's really cool. And that was one of them. One of my favorite pictures of myself. And what I like the most about it is it's really not of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's using me as, as a mirror to reflect what's what I'm seeing, it's, which is kind of cool. I think it's got a lot of artisticness to it. So I guess you could say as far as the one picture of me you do have, 
I'm looking the part of an artsy fartsy jackass, you know, good for me. But that's it's kind of a weird one, you know. How do you look the part? And what is it? What do you mean by looking the part? Like, what, well, what are you talking about? Is this just in in the realm of being a musician? Well, no, it really has to do with everything. And I, this one's going to kind of go outside the scope of just music, but I think it has to do with a lot of stuff. Like, I was tempted to talk about leadership and, and you know leadership as a musician but i figure that's best for another episode but it might touch base a little bit on that you know i don't want to get too far carried away and uh but there's a looking the part is a big statement it really is and this is something i've had to deal with in uh, my my professional line of work is that looking the part is really important and it's kind of like you, you sort of understand it that when you're a musician, if especially if you're in a band, you know, you know, looking up, looking a certain way, it does tell a lot about you. But at the same time, like I can go put on a gangster rap wardrobe, you know, and it's and it's just so obvious that it it doesn't work, right? So, you know, I have the feeling that this episode may not be too long because I have a feeling if, if I drag this one out too much, I'll touch too many points, and that's not what I want to do. Uh, so this might be more like a 30 or 40 minute episode, and that's fine. Hell, who knows? Maybe less. They don't all have to be super long. That's what I'm finding. They don't all have to be. Maybe what I should do is have a uh, have quickies. Specifically, when I record these episodes, I've got 30 minute episodes and hour long episodes. You know, basically things that are 20 to 30 minutes long, and just a quickie, and then like a. Uh, uh, an hour long one you know maybe that's the how i should do it but when it comes to looking the part what i realized is after after being out of the music scene you know playing live for a while where we think it matters so much and that then being in having a being a manager of sorts where you have to manage large groups of people and you've got you've got bosses and your people's bosses you hire you fire you promote demote you know, you move people around, you do all kinds of things, you plan for a business and, you know, you've got customers and clients and corporate people that want, want to know that you're doing a great job and how they feel about you is just an impression of how you actually do. You may be great, but if you don't leave them with the impression that you're doing a great job, it doesn't matter how good you're actually doing because the, their impression is reality. And so when it comes to looking the part, I think that's a Three words are very, very important, and that is impression is reality. So, how do you, how do you look in a way, how do, how do you look up the part, so to speak, to leave a realistic impression of what you are? I think that's a tough one, you know? So, it's kind of interesting. Um, this is, uh, this is one that I think is easier to understand sometimes if you've ever been in a leadership position, especially in a, in a career path, right? Because what, what I've noticed is a lot of the stuff that I've noticed professionally in my work life would also translate into the musical life, right? Like your stage life, all that kind of stuff. You know, at the end of the day, it's all kind of like a big game. You know, and every day you, you, you start over, right? Or every day is just another round of, round is, is, is one game within part of a bigger game, or however you want to look at it. But like I said, I, I kind of lost my train of thought here, but I think I'll get it back. Wait, where's my tea? I'll get it back. Hold on. I forgot what I was talking about. Darn it. That tends to happen. Wait, maybe I need more tea. Maybe that's the problem. Give yourselves a break and just think for a second. You know, how do you look the part as a musician? And how do you get people to believe you? And how do you need to look so that you're a believable musician? And do you really need to look? Do you even need to look a certain way? Should it matter? Does it matter? And if so, why does it matter? And why does it not matter? Think about that for just a minute. Now I want to go drink some tea, give you some dead space to kind of. Just think in silence. This is a big one, and I want you to kind of think about it. I want to finish my tea and crack open a beer. That's what I want to do, so enjoy. 
Why are my beer cans always dirty? You're so, you're so dirty. You're, you're so you're such a dirty, dirty, dirty thing, aren't you? Oh yeah. Here. Let me blow around your hole real quick. Let me motorboat. Oh, sorry, I forget I'm still on. I'm talking about my beer can. <laughs> what were you thinking? Oh, oh, you just love to take a dirt road, don't you? You're so, you're so, you're so bad. You're so bad. <laughs> you're so bad. Yeah. Mm. Nothing like a clean beer hole. So I hate it when you get you open your, you go to about to open, crack it open a beer can, you realize, man, there's crap all over the lid of this thing. Jeez. <clears throat> All right. Uh, enough time has passed, I would say. Well, maybe not quite. I feel like I need one more sip. <clears throat> All right. That's the thing about doing two of these in a row. Hey, you got to give you these morning radio guys some credit. These guys will do this over the course of like four hours. I mean, granted, they take breaks and all that more often than I do in a straight you know, hour, because basically I don't really stop a whole lot during one of these podcasts. I just go straight through it. At the very least, the radio guys get, they get breaks for commercials and whatnot, where I really don't. I mean, hell, that'd be great if I had people wanting uh, to have commercials on my show. I mean, that would be so cool. In fact, if you want to have a commercial on my show, please let me know. I might even give you one for free, <laughs> just because I don't really care. And I don't think anybody's listening a whole lot and too many people at the moment. But, you know, in time, this will be big. And it will be big if you help me share it. Because this will uh, positively impact other people's lives. I'm sure of it. So, Looking the Part. Yes, that's the title of the episode. Indeed. Looking the Part. This was kind of a tough one. Because I, ah, it's kind of hard to get into this and not sound like a douche, you know? <clears throat> but the truth is when you look a certain way sometimes it's more believable and the way you present yourself you know even if it may not be entirely different than others like you have done it i don't know sometimes people it's just not very original like when people do stuff like like for example and i'm not i'm not saying that this is necessarily politically correct but and i guess that's where i have a hard time with this in order for me to talk about this honestly i cannot be very politically correct so if a lack of political correctness bothers you go ahead and turn this off now because this the rest of this episode is going to piss you off all right but if you want to hear the truth and aren't worried about political correctness even though i try to be fairly politically correct within reason then keep on listening because i got more for you and what i got for you is this realize that who you are is going to dictate or more importantly not just who you are but how you look in relation to who you are it's going to kind of dictate some of the things you can and can't do all right and i don't mean this offensively but you know i see people do it you know but if you're rather portly and you're really into punk music um that you, you, I get it, skinny jeans. I, I get it, but you you just shouldn't. You just should not wear skinny jeans if you're portly. Um, not to say that that you, anyone you will stop you. You know, aside from just the manufacturers, they may not make a size forty five waist in skinny jeans. You know, what I mean, then again, half the time, which is unfortunate if you're overweight or very big, at boned, I should say. You know, a lot of times your options are pretty limited, and it's like. Well, I wasn't trying to get skinny jeans, Dreis, but that's, you know, everything I put on turns into skinny jeans. <laughs> you know, fair enough. Fair enough, big guy. Or big gal, it doesn't matter, you know. But big, big, you know, if that's how it is, I understand that to an extent. But what I'm talking about is, I'm not talking about people who are like morbidly obese. But realize, you know, that if you're, you know, 5'10 and 220 pounds, 
you're uh, skinny jeans. That ship has sailed. You know what I mean? You just, just don't. It's, it's, you're going to come across just ridiculous. It's going to be obvious that you're ridiculous. And it doesn't matter how good you are. People are not going to take you seriously. It just imagine watching Chris Farley and he's a comedian. He's wearing skinny jeans. It just immediately, it's, it becomes a comedy scene, you know, whether you intend for it to be or not. Uh, so now if, if you are that person and you're, you know, 5'10 and, you know, got, got a little extra, a little extra padding around, you know, a little extra spare tire. You know, that, it doesn't mean you can't rock out. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean people won't take you seriously. You know, hell, everyone's fat pretty much. <laughs> Join it. You're, hell, you're part of the majority here. You know, not a big deal. Hell, I got a few pounds I probably shouldn't have, you know. But uh, not, not, not dogging people who are heavy. I'm just saying, let's just be realistic. Just kind of like you, you wouldn't go out in a Speedo. I mean, although people do. But, you know, if generally speaking, people who are a little overweight aren't going to dress in the same way that people are very fit not to say that it should be that way I, that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that's how it is and it, it and if you don't care then you don't care who cares like seriously if it doesn't matter to you then do whatever you want i support you and there will be people out there who will support what you do because you are being you and you don't care however if your goal is to reach the masses and you're playing in a band for example you know this stuff is a little bit more important you are reaching out towards the masses and you need them to take you seriously. So you need to look the part and who you are and how you are is going to help dictate how you need to look the part. So for example, if you're a little bit heavier, how do you, I mean, think about this for a second and you're into punk music. How do other people who are a little bit heavier generally dress if they're into punk? You know what I mean? That's kind of how you have to do it. <laughs> Not to say that you shouldn't put your own little original flair, but you know, instead of skinny jeans, maybe you should wear the kind of baggy jeans with the, the, uh, the chain, what is it? The chain wallet. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And th that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, uh, certain styles don't look as good on certain people and, and just sorry, but get over it. It's just kind of how it is. You know, if you're, there's like, I'm not, I'm like five foot seven. So there are certain things that I just realized that because I'm I'm on the shorter side of things. I'm, I mean, I guess you could say I'm average height, but I'm pushing it. I'm I'm short. Who <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it's not a big deal. It's just how I am. But there are certain things that aren't going to look as good on me as they will on somebody who is tall, right? Uh, now there it was different when I was short and really thin. I could pull off a lot of those things because I I, I gave that impression that I was very lanky. Well, now that I'm not quite so thin, <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't pull it off, right? So you have to change it. And I mean, it's kind of interesting. Like, I don't, you know, I think this is something that people kind of naturally do on their own. And it's kind of like an age appropriateness, you know, how you know, the way I dressed in my teens and early 20s is very different than how I dressed in my late 20s and early 30s. Now that I'm in my early 30s. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. This year, I'll be still in my early 30s but one more year closer to my mid 30s so i figure 30 31 32 33 that's early 30s 34 35 36 is mid 30s 37 38 39 is late 30s so this year i will enjoy the last year of my early 30s and i'm going to do everything i can to enjoy it because so i tell you what i've enjoyed my 30s but they've been very trying because that's what the 30s are like the kid the the kid years you know but <clears throat> The truth is, I guess I'll just speak for myself. I think it's easier if I use myself as a platform because then I'm not having to like potentially, you know, make fun of other people, which is not the point of this. You know what I mean? Although sometimes it's kind of hard not to like, look, uh, I, you know, there's just some things that don't work for you. Like, I realize you're really into, uh, I don't know, insert. I realize you're really into Lady Gaga and you that's the kind of vibe you want to put on. but you're a fat Chinese kid. You know what I mean? Not going to be able to pull that one off. <laughs> Get over it. You know, and that's just kind of how it is. So I'll use myself, for example. And while I haven't really thought about this a whole lot as far as, you know, musicality goes, because I'm not out there on the stage, it's not important. I have had to put a lot of thought and effort into this as far as to who I am as a leader and how to be, uh, how to be realistic and kind of look the part, right? So, but 
you know, realistically how I dress, I could also dress on a musical stage because I've kind of gotten, I wouldn't say perfected, but I've kind of gotten this figured out from a, uh, a leadership perspective. In reality, if you look at it like this, you know, if you're in a band, especially if you're in the front man, you know, that's kind of the thing. You have a band needs a good front man because a band, a uh, front man kind of leads the band and leads the, 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 the show. If you really think about it, a good front man will help lead the audience to a great time. And that's what you, that's what a good band needs. So a lot of the same principles apply, right? So well, I'm real, it'd be real easy for me to get into uh, you know leadership side of things, which I think I'll have another episode probably after this one about, because I think I, I have a lot of experience and I could really help people on that a lot because I've got a lot of leadership experience and uh, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've seen others make a lot of mistakes. And once you kind of go through that process and become an effective leader, it's like, oh, you know, obviously you get better and better every day, but you get to a certain threshold where it's like, okay, I'm now a good leader and I can do this. And you see people going through that process because it's a journey. It's not something you just naturally are, you know, it's something that you become and it takes time, practice, and just energy. But like I said, when it comes to looking the part, I've had to deal with this as a leader. And you know, naturally, what everyone, what you think is, oh, if you're going to, you want to look a certain part, well, you got to dress, you, dre- you got to dress for the job you want, right? So, you know, realistically, how I dress, I, sometimes I, I wear, I wear like slacks and a, and a button up shirt. I do that sometimes, but I also let myself be seen dressed a little closer to how I really am in real life, which is more um, kind of country ish. Well, I'm not really like a lumberjack or that country of a person. The point is, I wear these clothes because they last a long time. That's why I do it. However, I'm also aware that while that may be my opinion on it, other people will look at that and assume certain things about me, right? And the reason I mention all this is because I want I want you to really take you through the 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 mindset that you need to get through. So for people to take one look at you, hear you say something, and immediately realize what you're all about. And whether it's true or not is completely not germane to this conversation, although it could be. But you want to send a message very quickly to your fan, to your audience, who you are and what you're about. And you shouldn't have to tell them. If you have to tell them who you are and what you're about, you got a problem. <sighs> you know, like. And that's kind of, that's what I've noticed that is the difference between a good band who, in my opinion, has made it. And I'm not saying they're a national success, but a band who has a good show and presence versus one that is still finding it. And we've seen it. <clears throat> oh, we've seen it many times. And you can tell, like a, a good front man or a good band, they have a presence about them. They don't have to tell you they're awesome. You just know. You just know they're awesome, right? So how do you do that? So I'm going to kind of walk you through that process a little bit. And I'm going to walk you through that process based on kind of a process that I, I took when I got my first official assignment in a leadership role where I was, I was the head boss, like I was the main man, you know? And, uh, you know, now I kind of, now I, I've since then been promoted again to where I'm not much, I guess you could say a more prestigious role. To where it's kind of a, you know, I can still get away with how I used to dress and, and present myself, but I can also present myself in a much um, fancier light if I choose to. And I've done so many times and I kind of go back and forth. It just depends on what's going on and how I feel, you know. But at any rate, my first assignment as being, being the man, you know, it was cool, kind of nerve wracking, but I had to think about it. You know, I'd been really developing my, uh, my my style because it's important it really is regardless of what career you're in it is important and you need to figure this out and if you do you will likely be more successful so i needed to have a way to where people could take one look at me and think that they understand me and something that was easy to understand not so, not something complicated i was looking for simple simple is always better than complicated keep it simple stupid so I realized that I've kind of grown an affinity to a, being outside, working out in the in the country, and I, I've really kind of become to the point where I would like to have a farm or a ranch. You know, that that sounds like something that's fun to me. 
but I would not consider myself an especially country redneck person. I'm kind of transitioning into that, but it's not something I'm actively trying to do. It's something I'm doing because it just, the stuff interests me and that seems to be a natural progression. Oh, deep breath, deep breath. It's okay to breathe. And so I noticed that like, you know, I used to buy Levi pants. That was my thing, you know. I like Levi's and I still like them. I do. But the problem is they don't hold up at the same level, that, at the level I need them to. They're fine for just, if you just walk around and do stuff, you know. But when you're doing like real work, like outside work, construction, or really physical stuff, getting up and down, moving around, you know, you, they just don't hold up very well. And I'm sure that there's a certain type of them that will, but the ones I like didn't hold up and they're like 50, 60 bucks. I'm like, geez, I'm just going through these things every three, four months. This is, this is ridiculous. I can't afford it. I'm, I mean, I can, but I don't want to have to keep paying for this. So, and I also realized, you know, I'm not in my early twenties anymore. I'm getting into my late twenties. You know, I need to change this up. I got to realize that I'm pushing 30 and that in my role, it kind of helps if people sort of think that you're older than you really are, especially when you're a certain age. Now, once you get to a certain age, you want people to think you're younger than you really are. I'm not saying it's how it should be, but it's just reality. All right, and remember, impression is reality. So I made the conscious effort to kind of reinvent myself, and it was kind of weird at first. So I did what I, what I now think is commonplace is, I, you know, I, I went to the academy, right? Because first I went and tried putting on like slacks and stuff like that. And while, you know, sure, it's okay. It just, mm. the truth is that stuff wasn't going to hold up considering the kind of work I was going to have to do. I mean, well, granted I was the man, but I was still in a, pos a place and uh, the position expectation was that I would still be fairly hands-on, right? Where now it's not really expected of me to be that hands-on. Not to say I can't be, and I like to do it. And I do it purposely, but the previous, uh, position i was expected to be more hands-on a uh, smaller operation that's just how it goes so i decided you know what i want to put on this persona that that says you know i i'm the kind of guy who rolls up his sleeve and gets it done which kind of became a joke to those who know, who are within that location after about a year it was real obvious that that is i had no intention of doing that <laughs> but i wanted to give the impression that you know, I'm a simple, easy to understand person. You know, I'm here. To, this is an honest job. I'm here to do an honest day's work. You know, and I'm willing to put in uh, the effort needed to do the job. All right. So I dressed in a, I guess I'll go bottom to top. You know, I would wear usually some kind of a work boot, you know, something kind of leather, steel toed. Now, the ones I really fell in love with were the uh, Justin Stampede steel toe, square toed work boot. It looks kind of like a cowboy boot, except for it's lace up. So it's technically a work boot, not a cowboy boot, but it looks kind of like a cowboy boot, but it's steel toe and not pointy. That's my problem with, I don't, with working in boots is I don't want a pointy set of work boots. It just doesn't work well for me. I need to be able to kick stuff like ass. So I wore that. And then for uh, my pants, I would generally wear some kind of like a, a Wrangler work pant. You know, occasionally I'd switch it up with something else. Um, they're very rugged, durable, and you know, I mean, they, they certainly give off a certain image of you. And then generally some kind of a cheap, like, Target bought collared polo shirt. You know, nothing special. The cheaper, the better. And I had these things for a long time. A lot of these I already had for a long time, so they were kind of getting a little faded. You know what I mean? But the point is, I looked like a salt-of-the-earth kind of guy. And that's what I really, that was kind of like the, what the, the position was really looking for was kind of a salt of the earth guy just to handle the common man and that kind of thing and it well that may seem messed up the truth is i could have gone in there and you know in a suit if i wanted to but that was not really it really wouldn't help and i really couldn't pull it off now the reality is after really like six months but let's just say after a year i hardly did anything you know what i mean it, i just basically showed up talked and it, it, my job became almost 100 percent leadership i mean almost 100 percent but I still needed to give off the image that I really get in there and get dirty and get, you know, get my hands on the job. And I really invest with it physically. And when, you know, when it hits the fan, I get it done, you know, that kind of thing. Because that's what the corporate people expected of me. And now nothing could be further from the truth. So 
I managed to, I decided to let my beard grow out and I kind of did my hair a little differently. And I looked up probably about five, five to seven years older than I really was. And I kind of, <laughs> and it, it was effective, you know, it, it was kind of funny when, when people would, it was like they were surprised that people that worked for me would be surprised that I understood a little bit about what they were talking about because it's like they thought I was like way older than I was. It was just funny. Not only to come to find out, oh, you're only this old? I'm like, yeah, but I guess it didn't bother them that I was a lot younger than they thought I was because I acted mature in their opinion. I was, you know, very mature for my age. Well, yeah, nothing could be further from the truth, but impression is reality. You see what I'm saying? So the same thing, and the reason I walk you through this <clears throat> is because, you know, that's what people are doing in their head when they see you for the first time. So when you get up on that stage, you need to have an image that is easy to interpret, makes sense, and that people kind of immediately, like the second you talk, they kind of have an expectation of how you are and who you are, even if it's complete bullshit. You see what I mean? Like, imagine if you saw Marilyn Manson, right? On stage for the first time, dressed the way he does and acting the way he, you know, looking the way he does, I should say. And then he gets out there and he's like, um, okay, guys, so let's have a lot of fun tonight. Yeah. You know, it's like, and he's like, acts like this flamingly, you know, stereotypical gay person. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, if that's the way he came across or he talked, yo, yo, what's up, homies? You know what I mean? Like, what the hell? You know, it, maybe some people would find it entertaining, but. It, th that ship would sink real quick. It all has to go hand in hand. So you can't be a completely different person and try to pull off something else, but you can kind of ham up a, f a few things or embellish a few things or hide a few things so that it all works together well, kind of cohesively. So let's see, you know, how, do, how, now how does that work for the average person, right? Let's say you're, you know, you know, a 23 year old individual, fresh out of college, you know, you're in your young to mid 20s, and, uh, you know, you have a, you know, a, your entry level in a profession that you're doing, and you also do music on the side, and you like to play gigs, but you want to appeal to people, you know, and let's say that you're, you do hard rock. Hmm. Well, how do you do that? Because you have to have a, you can't have a, a crazy hairdo and, and balance that out, right? But at the same time, if you were to have a crazy hairdo, it might be pretty obvious that that's not who you are. And there's a good chance that if you're not that kind of individual, it'll be very apparent in the music you write and how you play it, right? So maybe there's something to be said about like, look, if you're not really, don't try to play the part if you're not the part, all right? Maybe there's something to be said about that. But Realize, let's say that there's a lot of times where, you know, yeah, geez, I may not look the part, but this is me. You know what I mean? I, ha I purposely have to scale myself back quite a bit so that I can make a living. But now I want to play music and I want people to look at me and immediately understand who I am. Well, guess what? When you have that business professional haircut, there's a good chance that you can slap on all the slipknot clothing and war paint you want. But if you don't have a bunch of tattoos and piercings to go with it, it's pretty obvious that you're a weekend warrior, right? So maybe that's kind of how you have to go about it is just realize that, you know, you're a weekend warrior and that's just kind of what you do, right? And maybe just kind of play off that a little bit and that's okay. But that, and that's where it gets sticky. Like there's some kinds of things that are hard to do and not be the part. But a lot of times, especially these guys that are in cover bands, you know, they have real jobs and they do this on the side because it's good money and they're oftentimes very good musicians and they kind of figure, hey, you know, I'm at a point where I, it doesn't make sense for me. I mean, I can play free gigs, but, you know, this is my free time. And if I'm going to go out there and, and spend time, money, and effort into this, I might as well make some money while I'm doing it. And, you know, it's kind of nice doing covers because people appreciate it oftentimes more than they appreciate originals and you usually have an audience to play at, at a bar that's ready to hear that kind of stuff. So I have no problem with doing with covers. I think it's a fun thing to do, and you can make some money while having fun. Although certain parts of it aren't that fun. They, it, it is a job. Don't get me wrong. When you're getting paid, it is a job. So keep that in mind. But, you know, you can kind of get away with doing things a little bit differently, you know? 
And that's one thing where I realized like oftentimes you have to take into reality who you are as a person with the kind of music you write and how you're going to go about it. But generally speaking, who you are as a person is a reflection of the music you write. So like, I think I could get away with writing the kind of music I do. And if you were to see me in person, it would kind of like make sense, you know, but that is a, that is a style that has been refined over many years. And that is just, you know, actively, it's kind of been done actively. Right. So, Oh, geez, I'm kind of derailing here. But the point is, you have to be realistic. And don't try to play a, a role that you cannot play, right? So what does this mean to a lot of people, you know? So you're that business, you know, semi-business professional, young, young 20, mid-20-year-old person. Let's say you're average height, average build. You know, that probably means you shouldn't go out there with muscle man shirts on, right? Probably not what you need to do. Uh, so how do you go about it? You want, you know, are, what are you trying to go for? You're, you're doing hard rock, you know, well, huh? Well, what's something that a lot of people who like hard rock are like, you know, they like, oh, you know what? I've noticed this a lot. How many times have you seen somebody with like a, a backwards hat or like a straight bill hat or something like that? And they ride a truck and they're, they're kind of clean cut people, but they like to rock, you know, they look like big frat boys, you know, truck driving frat boys. That is something that people can relate to. That's good stuff. Now, I can't pull that off, right? Because I'm, I'm not one of those people. It's, it's very obvious. I mean, maybe I could, but it's, hmm. it's just I'm too different from that for it to work effectively. But perhaps you're not. You know what I mean? Well, hey, you know, I, I drive a truck. Yeah. Yeah, I like to drink beer. Yeah, I was in a fraternity. Fuck yeah. I'm a... I'm a <laughs> You know what I mean? Dress that way. Go ahead, put on that stupid, uh, you know, store name brand shirt on with the, you know, with a, the, the the stupid straight bill hat of some your favorite truck company or whatever. Uh, not now, what are they called? JPEGs or jugs, jags, or whatever. I, I can't. I'm so not cool that I don't even know what it is. But if I were to see it, I would. Or put on your like your your Fox brand like motorcycle like, gear. You know what I mean? People relate to that. Even if, now, even if you're not into motorcycle stuff, you can wear that kind of thing. And people kind of like, oh yeah, that's kind of like one of my people, like because they probably know people who wear that dress that way, right? You know, you get the you get the rock those those pants on with the fancy like stitching. I think they're real expensive. I forget who makes them, but I see them out there in these. And I think of man, these people who wear this stuff are douches. But you know what? A lot of people relate to that, you know what I mean? And that's, I'm not trying to make fun of people here. I'm just saying a lot of people relate to that, right? So that's the, that's an example of something that you can do. Now, let's say, let's say you're kind of a, a person more, let's say you're kind of a small, introverted, kind of thin person, not a real masculine kind of a guy, kind of a faint, kind of a, a very small build you know, just nothing real physically impressive about you. That's the way a lot of musicians are, right? Well, that's when you can do other things, right? Now, when I've seen these kind of guys where it it's always seems like if you put off the perspective that you're like a stoner or like a real artistic kind of person, you know, people tend to understand it. You know, oh, now I, I understand what you are. I, you're, I see, I know what you're all about now. So you go out there with a freaking Bob Marley shirt, even if you're playing death metal, it doesn't always matter because as long as they see that you're into, hey, you're an artistic person, you're saying, hey, I, you know, I like all kinds of things, but I find this is art and this is cool to me. People get it. Whatever it is, you just want to make sure that people can take one look at you and understand who you are, even if it's not true at all. That's what you want to be able to give, get away. And it's, you can't, you can only fake it so much. That's the point of it. You can only fake it so much. So if you were to see me play live, you know, maybe I, I could probably do metal. If I, if I made, made an effort to do that, I would have to probably wear like a trucker hat or something like that. Maybe put on a, some studded belts or something like that. But, you know, I've got, I've kind of got, a, I guess you could say the right, physique for to pull off something more of like a you know kind of like a trucker style thing except for i'm kind of small so maybe not uh 
I guess I could also pull it off where if I wore like a certain type of hat, I could look like an artsy fartsy Austin y kind of person. I could maybe pull that off. You know, that's kind of I could maybe even pull off I do country music. Yeah, I could pull that off, you know. So maybe a good image for me is to like, especially with my music, is kind of I'm sort of like an artistic country person, you know what I mean? Now the the funny thing is it'll blow your mind because that's when you hear the music I play, that's not and it's kind of country, it's kind of artistic, but it's really not. It's just basically acoustic pop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who cares? I, I can say it. I'm not that invested in my music. But the point is, you, you have to be able to find something that's not too far from who you are and maybe embellish it a little bit, right? So this is something I think people have a hard, hard time doing. Uh, now, what if you're... So I want to just talk about something that's kind of, kind of manila, you know? What if you're just like... The average person, um, and where it gets hard is when you get older. It really does. It's like nobody's going to stop you from being 40 something years old, you know, and playing original music. But realize if you're 45, you're probably not, in, I mean, odds are you're not interested in the current, you know, new age rock, anyways. But realize that you're probably the kind of music you're going to play is going to suit a different audience than. The music that a young 20s or teenager is playing, right? And I think that's fair. I don't think anybody's going to likely disagree with that. And there'll be very few people and very few far between that break that mold, right? So realize if you're in your 40s, you're going to be playing music that, and probably playing at places where people closer to your age range, the 35 to 50 year olds, you know, that's kind of your target, 35 to 55, that 20 years. I found that however old you are, up to a certain point, like if if I'm 30, I need to be I need to be able to make music that's that that can go 10 years in either direction. I need to have an image that people understand within 10 years of either direction. Yeah, that's that's kind of a I think a good sort of general rule of thumb. Now it doesn't work when you're a teenager, obviously. You know, this is music that that eight year olds relate to. No, 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 that's probably not what you need to be doing. Uh, but you need to be able to, it would be more like music that's currently within your age range and up to 10 years up is, is a good way to look at it. And like I said, that equation doesn't work up until you hit a certain age range. But realistically, by the time you're in your mid-20s, you know, 23, 24, 25, that's when people are really starting to identify with music in their teens, you know? So I think that's a fair statement. So let's say you're in your 40s, you need to be able to relate to people that are, that are in their 30s and 50s. So how do you do that? Well, you probably don't do it by wearing a kiss mask, I'll tell you that much. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's, so you got to imagine people that are, that are in their 30s to 50s, they get, grew up through you know, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So somewhere in there, they kind of understand things, you know? But you don't want to go so far outside into the 70s that the people who grew up during the 90s just have no idea what you're talking about so what you probably want of course it depends on who you are and how you look and how you act and the kind of music you're playing but more than likely you're playing some kind of an alternative rock or classic rock style right so you need to be someone that's kind of a you know, dress and, and a present yourself in a way that is appropriate for somebody who appreciates that style of music right that probably does not mean wearing slacks and a dress up and a button up shirt that's probably not what you need to do <clears throat> but you could go there in a pair of khakis you know a uh, a nice polo shirt right and maybe or something like that and have on a uh, some kind of an artistic hat you know you could you can get away and it would make sense you know what i mean it's like okay i get it this is this is a, a, a serious this is a person who plays music they, this is what they do right you can get away with a lot of things but you have to be realistic you are not going to go in there with your weatherman style haircut and put on a ZZ top shirt, some holy jeans, some funky f shoes, you know, some British knights, <laughs> and think that you're, oh yeah, you're hip. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't try to be hip. That doesn't work. Be hip, which is an age appropriate hip. What do people your age, what do they look up to? You know, uh, when they go out and they, and they're, they're, they're kind of like dressed down and they're they're in a comfortable mode like if they're you know what i mean like if they're going to the beach and how would they dress you know what i mean maybe that's what you need put on some your tony llamas i i, I don't know 
maybe that's what you if what you do is you dress for really comfortably you put on some like uh some kind of hawaiian style shirts maybe some tie-dye stuff something that says party you know if that's what you're if you're doing party music you need to be a party animal does that make sense so I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but I, I hope that we're kind of like having a discussion that you're kind of thinking about the kinds of things you need to keep in mind when you're on the stage and when you're trying to look a certain part, because you need to look the part you need and more importantly, you need to be the part. But if you fall short in a little, in a little area, which most of us do, you know, how do you look and look the part so that people can take one look at you? And pretty much instantly know what you're about, and then if they when they hear you talk, they re- or hear what you do, it's just all it, it all comes together and makes sense, right? Well, sometimes it's as simple as wearing a hat, you know what I mean. But I tell you what doesn't seem to ever work very well is what most people wear in their daily basis, which is a pair of sneakers, some blue jeans, and a t-shirt. J- generally, don't do that. Don't do that. It doesn't come off very well. It doesn't look like you put any effort into it but at the same time you also don't want to look like you put effort into it you know what i mean it's kind of a weird balance this needs to be like this is how you dress on a daily basis like this is just who you are like you just happen to came up off the street and, hey there's a gig oh I, i'm gonna go play this you know i had no idea up until five minutes before now that i was doing this but now i'm doing this that's how you need to kind of look like this is how you are on a daily basis so you know think about it you're being a performer <laughs> you know what i mean dress the part you're performing but I tell you what never works, I mean never, is a, 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 you know some stupid baseball hat that says Dodgers on it, a t-shirt from Fruit of the Loom, and a pair of just regular work Lee dungarees, and some Nike tennis shoes. It just, that, that doesn't say music. That doesn't say rock and roll. That doesn't say anything. It just says, I'm lame, right? And you don't, that's the, the worst thing is being lame. It's one thing to be, you know, a little pretentious. It's one thing to be over the top. Those are all not ideal things, but they're all better than being lame. So just a little food for thought. Wow, this has already been 52 minutes. Mm. I sure am a grandmaster rambler. So I don't know, just kind of some things to, to look into and how to make it work, but it's kind of like you watch American Idol or the X Factor, I guess, or The Voice. I mean, yeah, American Idol is over now, but the, the the Voice, and you see how they kind of work with their image, and that's very important. Uh, and I think that's a good example of how to do it. You know, a lot of times I think they go over the top, <laughs> but that's fine. You know, sometimes it's as, it's you can get a, get away with just putting on a a certain type of shirt. You know, like a pearl snap shirt or something artistic or something that just kind of helps embellish who you are as a person, kind of like brings out your personality. It's like, wow, that shirt really brings out your eyes, right? But in this case, it's more like, wow, your wardrobe really brings out your personality. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Look as look at as your wardrobe as seasonings. All right, you're the main dish, right? But how you flavor it makes a big difference. You know what I mean? So you don't want to put too much salt. You don't want to undersalt it. You don't want to put too much pepper. Not too little, though. You want to have a little spice there. At the same time, you also want to go out there and boy shorts. I guarantee you that will not work out very well for you. Unless you're playing at a gay bar and you happen to have the body that makes it work. And if that's the case, all the more power to you. You know? But the point is, I guess that's a good way of looking at it. It only took me some 50-something minutes to figure this out. So as a performer, you, the person, are the main dish, right? However, use your wardrobe as a way to season that dish. (laughs) Your personality and your image are the main course, right? And how you basically frame it is up to you, but it needs to make sense so that people can take one look at it and appreciate it and understand it. And kind of feel like they know who you are and connect to you. All right. It's been a pleasure. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.